We have learned to fly the sky like birds and we have learned to swim the seas like fish. But we haven't learned to walk the face of earth like equals and brothers and sisters. Ends the bridge between the rich and the poor. Today on Amazons, we will be discussing the physical differences between classes. Welcome to Amazons. Aisha Bimbo. Bridging the gap. Bridging the gap. Employment. Creating Class. avenues of employment would be... In this would be day what? and age. Yeah. People still... Some people are still below poverty, living below poverty line. Fine. That's and true. the rich are getting richer, I see that, and the poor are getting poorer. poorer. But really, what is class? Class is a social status, not only social, social status in terms of earning power, social, uh, social status in terms of economic power, mm. social status in terms of um, uh, lower and upper, mm. and you cannot find the middle. In this case, the middle is missing. Mm -hmm. How can we make the lower begin to push towards the middle mm -hmm. so they can be uh, closer to the top. Yeah. That is what bridging the gap means. So, but, but it, 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 we, we, we've, we've developed so many technology. We, we, I mean, right now, so many things are being developed daily. If you think about what used to happen back then, say, say 20 years ago, the kind of um, technology that is in place now, why is it that we haven't been able, as a society, Let's move away from our society as well. In the world, being able to bridge this gap between the, you know, the poor people and the rich people. Because it's, poverty has been in existence in time memorial as far as I'm concerned. Bimbo? Why haven't we been able to bridge it? Because uh, the government is not concerned about bridging it. And it's not uh, something that the masses can do. Mm. That's the truth. We can't, as much as we want to, mm -hmm. We can't. First and foremost, to bridge the gap, to make sure there's little or maybe nothing or nothing there, mm -hmm. there has to be electricity. Mm -hmm. Especially in a country like ours, the basic amenities must be available to everyone. Mm. Look at small businesses. I, I, let's imagine I want to start selling turkey mm -hmm. or fish. These, this, this, I need to have constant light for it to work. Yeah. I, if I'm starting that business, I can't be thinking of how much I'll spend on fuel because usually when people start, they start with as little as just one you know, carton of turkey mm -hmm. and grow from there. But growth in small businesses is not possible because we don't have the basic amenities. Mm -hmm. Another thing is employment. Yeah. Employment is a serious problem in Nigeria. We have mm. so many people out there who have graduated and can't find anything to do. So, so would, you, would, you, would, you say, would you say because of lack of employment, that's the reason why we still have that massive gap? Because as far as I'm concerned in Nigeria, there is no middle class. No, it doesn't sure. exist. It doesn't exist. So, we're saying if you do not bring the infra infrastructure, mm -hmm. if you do not put it into place where people, whereby people can take the opportunity yeah. to better their, their lot, there's mm -hmm. really nothing, uh, there's, you are helpless. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we talked about uh, power supply. Yeah. You have to make housing, mm -hmm. employment. Mm -hmm. Employment has to be created mm -hmm. for growth. Housing has to be affordable. Mm -hmm. Healthcare has to be there. Of course. Education perhaps may be free. Mm -hmm. You do not have all of this. And the people... I thought we had free education in well, Nigeria one time, didn't that, we? That was, that was it's the quality of the free education, education that we're doubting. <laughs> <laughs> no, half education is still better than none at all. I mean, in this, in this case, mm -hmm. if, you, if you say I still have access to education, but I do not have the, 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 the best of facilities for the education, mm -hmm. as long as the teaching is not compromised, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, Bimbo, you made a valid point when you said, you know, even when these people are educated and they come out, they still don't find employment. No, they don't. Uh, I mean, we, we, we still go back it. to infrastructure. It's really weird. You go to school, you study, you come out of school, and then you go and apply for a job, and they say, oh, we need someone with at least three years experience and you don't where do you get school. the experience you don't nobody go to school to get experience no, you go to get a certificate nobody if nobody employs you how on earth are you going to get that experience let, let, let's look at taxes you know especially in lagos state now you know it, it, there's so much noise about you paying your taxes and everything and you know sometimes i laugh because i'm thinking okay i mean if if i employ a star who's on say maybe twenty thousand naira 
per month and the percentage of tax he's taking out from his salary, what, what would he take home? The, the point is that governance right now is still about thinking more of the rich and not so much about those below the poverty line. You find that those who pay their taxes regularly, if they are lucky to find employment, the taxes are deducted even before they get their paycheck. The paycheck will not take care of the tax because it's already removed. Mm -hmm. You get a list of those who are owing big money in banks today. Mm -hmm. It is those who are not paying taxes and the government is doing nothing, absolutely nothing about it. Uh, and look at this. Taxes is meant to create those infrastructures that, that we need. That's, that's, that's what we need. You know? And then and look at it from this point of view. We are all our own local governments, aren't we? Every, yeah, every, everyone I, is a local I, I, government. I can count how many times my, my house, there's no light. Of course. <laughs> Nepa comes once in maybe two, three months. So I, I, I'm, I'm in charge of my own light mm. supply. Water, it, there's a problem. I buy water. I'm in charge of my own water. The roads are not good. I fix my car more often. So in that, you, bad roads. You, you, because of bad roads. So really, at the end of the day, if you're taxing us and you're saying it's for basic infrastructure, where is the basic infrastructure when we are also doing the work that you're supposed to do with the taxes? Mm. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, in as much as we know that we have a society that is, that, you know, that, that is failing us or has failed us and everything, and the, 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 the gap is getting bigger and bigger you know, every day, uh, we'll be taking a short break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Amazons. We're talking about ways and trying to prefer solution on how to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. Mibu and Aisha, uh, they say a poor man would always dream of becoming a rich man. I wonder what a rich man would dream of becoming. Becoming richer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. But, but you know what? As we're talking about now in the cities, but let's look at the rural areas as well. These areas are so also important to the growth of the cities and the, con the country. What, what were, was the main thing that used to happen in rural areas? Farming, Farming. agriculture. Of course. Agriculture. Now, one of the things that we also need to do to bridge that gap is to create loans, you know, it, make it possible for these people to get loans, which is happening now course, in yeah. certain areas. Mm -hmm. And I know they bought fertilizers for all the farmers and all that. If we have the farming, the ag agricultural cultural sector of this country sorted, then we'll, see, we'll start to see a change, a difference, and a slight decrease in that gap. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the loans made available and the roads to transport their goods from the villages, from the, you know, the rural areas to the city. It's less also, taxes? Yes. yes. And less, they do less tax taxes. them a lot. Aisha, we've got Mr. Ilari Eledu. He's a financial and business advisor. So maybe you can come and tell us how we can bridge this gap. Thank you. Mr. Ilari Eledu, please. <laughs> you are very welcome. Thank you for being part of the show. You dress like our president. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Take a seat, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're a financial business advisor. You're also a business investment manager and also a human capital manager. Wow. Okay, good. Member of the Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. All right, sir. Bridging the gap. It is one of the biggest problems facing our society today. And it is getting, it's getting worse. Getting worse by the, it, it is getting worse by the minute. That's correct. As a financial advisor, what do you think is the root of this? Well, the thing is, uh, uh, bridging the gap basically of poverty is a universal problem. Mm. It's not associated with Nigeria alone. Very you true. You see the poor people in America, poor people in Europe, poor mm -hmm. people in Asia. So it's a universal problem. And uh, to tackle it basically, uh, it, it has to be tackled holistically. Mm -hmm. It's not just to tackle one aspect of it. Uh, one thing you should know also is that you always have the very rich and you always have the very poor. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. But for us to bridge the gap, then we need to take a definite step, which I believe is what we're going to go into at this discussion. Okay. And it has to involve the people themselves, then they also have to involve the government. So it's, it, it has to be a joint thing that yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we all have be. to set our, our mind towards and, yeah. and find ways to achieve it. We, we always say in Nigeria that there is no middle class, there is no middle class. Really, is, there, is, it, is it true that we don't have middle class? The reason I ask that is because, the, for example, let me use this new rave about Blackberry phones, okay? Uh, the, the poor people can't afford it because it's really expensive. Okay, but there's some there's there's a group of people in Nigeria who still have access to these little little things, and then we have the people who can p probably afford, you know, something better than that. I, those people in the middle don't they fall into the middle class? Well, uh, the middle class basically is a class that has disappeared from the uh, surface of the uh, of the country. For I'm supposed to be in the middle class. I'm not super rich, and I know I'm not poor. But there are some places in this country I cannot dream of having a home there. Why? Well, because the cost of getting a home is very high. Okay. And even if I want to get a mortgage, mm -hmm. how much, most of the mortgage rate is about, above 20%. Mm -hmm. it's so it's not something that I can afford. So you find out that basically the middle class is fast disappearing. And what you have now really is you have more of the super rich and then the, very, the impoverished poor. So you, people, you sorry, you were okay. saying that uh, uh, that uh, you know, poverty is a world issue, and I agree with you. It is because there's no country that I've been to that I haven't seen that they do have ghettos. Of course, I they have do. seen that. Mm -hmm. But one thing about those countries is that there's an effort. You can see there's a, 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 an effort by the government to make life easier. Dolako was telling me about you're out of a job. There's a little something the government yeah. will give you to carry you through until you get a job. Income you've just, had a, you've just had a baby, you can't do anything. There's a little support from the government. Even if you can't do something, there's still a check given to you because you've had a baby. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're poor because of some ailment or the other. You can go on, but you can get particular funding for everything. There's welfare. To, mm. to, you know, to help people cope through certain parts. So yeah. the level of poverty is actually you know, lesser in those countries. Mm -hmm. Not that it's not there, it exists, but the percentage is less as opposed to a, a country like Nigeria. Yeah, I quite agree with you. Uh, government of uh, the United States of America and even some of the European countries, they, there's a measure that the government have placed so that even if you are without job, at least you are able to take care of your basic needs. Needs, yes. And that is commendable. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the government of, uh, I will not call Africa third world, mm -hmm. developing economies like Africa, we should encourage our government to put in uh, 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 social initiative like that. I believe we have the money mm -hmm. and we should channel it to the very poor so that we, we at least give them a kind of hope. Because mm -hmm. I know that we have a lot of talented people in Africa. Yes. We have a lot of people that are skilled, gifted. Mm -hmm. All they need is opportunity to express their gift. Mm -hmm. And I believe government should start by giving them a kind of safe landing. So that even if they, do, even if they are uh, unemployed for a particular reason, mm -hmm. at least they can be able to take care of their basic needs. Okay. I believe that should. Okay. The, 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 sorry, I want to respond to that. You, <clears throat> Wimbo said something now about the fact that this government, set, they've set things in place to be able to sort of like try and balance, you know, this gap. Okay, and you're responding and saying, you know, well, it's okay and, you know, it's possible. But you see, one of the things that I think, one of the key things that I think is actually fueling this bridging, um, sorry, um, the, the class difference is corruption. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you're bringing, you want to, pro you want to make available Things like being busted about if you're an income, if you if you can't work, you can go and get income support. If you're sick, you can get sick pay. In a country, for example, I'm using Nigeria, where we are so corrupted, will it work? Really? Won't people try and beat the system? Because even abroad, some people still do that. There are people who are able to work, but because they know that these things is available, they would claim they don't want to work. And some of them go to different boroughs and collect money to do that. But in a country like Nigeria, where you it, it's even difficult to be able to trace people. Will it work? It's for him. <laughs> well, uh, the thing is, I think everything we are going to discuss today, we have to make the assumption that corruption is not an issue. We know it's a problem mm -hmm. because <laughs> that, any, no. that will be burying our heads in sand. <laughs> I not, think we have to let, let No, him what, I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is that every kind of initiative you want to, every kind of initiative you want to suggest. You have to assume that it will not pass through the hand of corruption. Otherwise, 
we're not, we're not going to get There's any no point. <laughs> like so the, no. the corruption <laughs> is there. It's part of the problem. Mm. Basically, <laughs> it's a lot of the problem we have with poverty in this country, like I said, is corruption. Because mm. Nigeria is blessed. We have, apart from oil resources, there are a lot of resources that we, we have not resources. even looked at. Yeah. In fact, I think oil has become more of a cause than a blessing. Yeah. Because <laughs> before the advent of oil, we have been self-sufficient uh, in terms of Cocoa. harnessing yes. a lot of our, our, our resources. Mm. Agriculture was contributing about 70% to our GDP. And we have uh, and people were hardworking. Mm. People do not want to, f but oil have brought about a lot of laziness. A lot of people want to follow the shortcut to success. And no, there's no, no shortcut. Not, not from those living below the poverty line. But from those who even are from up there, those that are because, up there, because, because they see corruption as a very easy way to wear, so they don't even want to. They don't even want to think about how to. Because look, exactly. if, if uh, you are in government and you see that oil is an easy way, there are a lot of other potential in the. In we have not even scratched the surface of solid mineral. We have not very scratched true. the surface of agriculture. Mm -hmm. We have arable land. We have countries that they don't even have the kind of fertile land that we have. Mm -hmm. And like Dubai was a desert, of but we were able to create. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, something out of a desert because mm. the government was creative. They had to think about, okay, this uh, we have oil, but oil will soon run out. So what do we do? So they so, have to think of so a way the, forward. The diversification really is a, is, is, is a function of, of government. Yes. As a financial advisor and an accountant, having access to loans and facilities mm -hmm. by the uh, below the poverty line citizens of this country it's non-existent, as far as I know. And also, the institutions, as a financial analyst, advisor, and an accountant, has the institution really addressed this issue of access to loans and facilities for the, uh, uh, the, the, the poverty, below the poverty line citizen in order to, to shore up their own earning power to be able to bridge the gap? between the rich and I'm not, I'm not saying that they should be, uh, the, the gap should be narrow. At least make life meaningful. Yeah. Let, let the citizens have quality life in their own small, you know, small environment. Is that so difficult? Well, in terms of the, of the, of the, those in the uh, middle level, uh, 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 rung of the ladder, uh, our conventional banks are not structured to do that because the kind of interest and the, uh, that's ridiculous. The kind of facility they will, that, that they, even if they agree to give you a facility, the interest rate is not sustainable. You won't be able to afford that. Mm -hmm. But for them to even give you a facility, they will demand a lot of collateral. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. And you don't have a But we have institutions like the microfinance that are set up to do that. Whether they are doing that effectively now, it is left for us to measure. The, some the, some, the, some the, of them are collapsing because the people that took money are not paying back. So and it goes back to the fact as well. Uh, Dollar Aisha. Call. Those who have access to this microfinance are not the people that need it. Are not the people that need it. I'll tell you, I'll give you another example. There are some housing estates that you say is built for those people we are talking, talking about yeah. below the poverty line. Yeah. If you go there today, those houses have been bought over by those who are, you know, those above. Who, are, who are above the poverty, poverty line. line. Therefore, th there's really no, no enforcement. If you say this, is, this housing estate is built for, I am. Um, uh, uh, what was it called? Abraham Adesanya, for instance, mm. was said to be for those below the poverty line. Can you find any one of them in that estate today? No, nope, you cannot. But the rich are buying five, four, six at once. And they rent it to this, this uh, those, those, uh, the, the middle class that is dis disappearing. But so see, it's a question of also enforcement and a deliberate effort. Deliberate. Mm. Not, li not, not lip see, service. I'll, I'll tell you what led to that. And that is why the rich will keep getting richer and the poor will get, uh, keep getting poorer. Mm -hmm. You see, the rich have a reason why they are rich. Mm -hmm. That is, they have a mindset, a mentality. Mm -hmm. They have a habit. Mm -hmm. The poor also have a habit why they are poor. Why will someone sell a house? Uh, of course, we are assuming that the initial uh, owners of the Abraham Additional Estate are the poor and the middle class. Mm -hmm. But a time came when they were willing to sell their property. Why would you want they to sell their property? They, they, they well, never I'm got sorry. access I'm to I'm sorry. It. What we're saying now is oh, minimum uh, housing. We, we, what's, that, what's it called again? That is meant for the poor. Yeah. You start to sell. Because when Ibrahim Adesa started selling, he started selling at 3 million naira. Exactly. And so are we saying poor. people been, that are earning less than 18,000 naira a month can afford to bring out 3 million naira to pay for that house? 
Well, maybe not at once, but if you have a savings culture, we, well, because you How see, do you save on 18,000 naira a month? I would love to know. Uh, the thing is this. You it see, was not sold on mortgage. No. It was cash down. It was cash down. It was oh, in no, the no, You see, even if it's cash down, you can When get, I say cash down, I don't mean bring the money, but it was a check at once. It was not planned to say, you know, from your salary, this you is how much pay, we would you can, you, 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 you can pay that monthly. Can be done. Like it's been, yeah. it's been done with, uh, in all these corporations with, with, for employees. You want to buy a car, they were, you know, you're paying your, car, your money into a certain bank and all banks were doing this. It was not just microfinances. All banks, they were yeah. allowing people to, as long as you had a job and you, you were collecting salary, they would buy the car and we deduct the money from your salary every month. Look, the people that need this money, and first of all, I need to ask you, uh, financial analyst, why are we paying 25% interest on loans? Well, it's the issue of, uh, I think that has to be a regulatory issue. But the banks will tell you that. Is it are, not risk? Uh, the, but the bank will tell you that is the level of risk. Really? That, uh, because they yes. factor in a lot of things. Then M, uh, NPR is there. NPR is at 12%. Mm. That is the basis for, that's the foundation. So they are not going to factor all the internal costs to arrive at what is going to be like the prime lending rate. Mm. And the prime lending rate is a factor of a lot of things. The, uh, how they profile your, your, uh, you as a risky person, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you are giving money to uh, a conglomerate, they might give him a much cheaper rate because they believe that they have the capacity to pay. pay back, but if yes. you are giving it to someone that possibly they... Uh, they have a doubt on, on your repayment capacity, then they will factor the risk because they are taking a risk in giving you depositors' money. Isn't that Just know that sure it's not the money of the bank, it's depositors' it's money. I understand that, but sure. isn't that also making sure that the poor remain poor and the rich richer? Well, you see, that is where, like I said, the uh, government have to create a kind of furniture, just like in, in the area of mortgage. You can get banks to give you mortgage for over twenty percent. You have federal mortgage bank that can give you a mortgage of, in the, uh, of sing, sing, single digit, mm -hmm. but then you have to meet the criteria. We're going to be taking a short break, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Now we now now we will talk to. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, what we're talking about today on Amazon is how to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. And we have Mr. Eledu, I pronounced it well, <laughs> Mr. Eledu, Eledu with us in the studio. He's a financial advisor who's going to start now prefer some uh, solutions to how we can do this. No, I, 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 I have, I have a question before you okay. prefer solutions. Okay. You know, during br the break, I was just reading through the statistics that I have here that the, a survey shows that 57% of adults in Nigeria are, un, are unemployed. And of this 57%, 62% are self-employed. And only 38% are, are in paid employment. Which means that government is only employing 38%. And that 62 that are self-employed, government are still not provided infrastructure for them to you know, establish the business in a proper way. So they are what they are generating is to provide those infrastructure that government should have provided to aid their own businesses, they are plowing it back to without making. So how do we, it comes to the, 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 the problem of uh, profiling solution. How do you have this kind of scenario and government is comfortable and still comes out to say that, look, this government is working. They are providing employment. I don't know where they get this, the figures from that they tell us because these are hard facts that I have before me here, Mr. Elidu. Well, on the issue of the statistics uh, that you've tabled before us today, I don't know the basis for that. But I, I, I believe that we have a lot of unemployment uh, issue in this country. And one of the things that we should start uh, thinking is not to depend on government. As it, this sixty-two percent has not depended on government. That that is part of what that is part of how the solution to this. Although government have a part to play, like I said, the people have a part to play too. Okay. The kind of the educational sector we have basically uh, teach us to go to school, get education, and depend on jobs. Mm -hmm. So, but we need to begin to educate people not just to depend on jobs but to create jobs. Mm -hmm. So, and I am happy with the percentage of people that are self-employed. My, my own worry is that those that are self-employed, do they have the right infrastructure to survive? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Because there's no point, be, for instance, why is the cost of doing business very high? Because every, every individual and uh, self-employed uh, entrepreneurs, you have to more or less uh, create your own government, provide your electricity, provide your water. These are even sometimes even provide the road. Because by the time, the, by the time uh, uh, your customers do not have access to you, you may be compared to tar road that is meant to be a government responsibility. Mm -hmm. So those are, the, those are the, the issues I have with the statistics you've just stated there. Mm -hmm. What you've told me is not, it's not, uh, it's not news. But my, at least I'm happy with the number of people that are self-employed. But my own issue is that those that are self-employed, they should, government should create a, an infrastructure, infrastructure for them so that they will not need to spend money to provide what government is legally constituted to provide. Answer. That is the answer. Um, um, Aisha, you said something earlier on about when, when you were talking about the Ibrahim Adesoya thing. And you said something yeah, about how the rich people will still go there. And they will still go and buy this money. You were saying something about how there should be some kind of regulation, isn't it? Something, yeah. some kind so, of so law. Where, where, you, where those who are in employment get to have access to these services, you deduct it like, you know, like I you do it with the cars. Uh, like you do with the cars. Deduct it from source at the end of the month, something that will not hurt their finances so much. Mm. Spread over a long period of time. At the end of it all, they still remain homeowners. Because so they don't pay and, rent. And, anymore. And, 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 and also, also, Maybe there's some kind of regulation where you know you they, they can put in place where you know if if a particular area has been constructed for for people below the the poverty level, then the rich people should not go there. So I'm gonna have um Mr. Dave Ajatombi is a legal practitioner to come and tell us if there's anything they can do about that. Hello, welcome to Amazon. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You are a legal pra practitioner. Yes. Okay. Um, today on Amazon, what we're talking about, we've been talking about how we can prefer a solution to bridging this gap between the rich and the poor because I believe that it's one of the greatest problems, you know, facing our society today. And um, I, Aisha was saying something about the fact that even some of the things that the government has actually put in place or some, some of the, we were talking about um, in terms of accommodation awesome. now, you know, and it's still these rich people that will still go there because they can afford to, or maybe I would say convince the poor people who are not able to maintain it and still buy it off them. As a legal practitioner, what do you think is happening? How can we really, you know, bridge this gap? Well, it will take a cautious effort on the part of government and the people to bridge this gap. Uh, we look at the cultural beliefs of the people too. It goes a long way to uh, cultural and religious belief. There are some people who just believe that uh, if you are rich, you may not get to heaven. Some people, maybe due to their background, they feel that begging <laughs> is the order of the day. In that case, there's little or nothing one can do overnight. In such a situation, it needs conscious effort to be made at educating and reorientating such species mm -hmm. of citizens. Okay. But when you talk about gap, mm -hmm. there's a need, there's, we have gap. Gulf, not even uh, <laughs> gap. We have gulf between the haves and have not. Okay. And uh, when you talk of security situation that we are in now, I think that is one of the major issues. Because anybody can hire a jobless man, an Almagiri, to go and plant bombs mm -hmm. somewhere. And you can go to somebody that is at least self-employed, is running a barbie salon or running a, some other little business mm -hmm. and is really making something for himself mm -hmm. to go and uh, plant bomb and blow up somebody or kill himself. Such a person will not be available. That is why people say that uh, I do hand is the yeah, devil's, devil's workshop. Yeah. So the need to bridge this gap is very, very imperative. It mm. is necessary in order to check the current security situation. Mm -hmm. Then it is also necessary if Nigeria is to take its rightful place in the Committee of Nations. Mm. Yes, like uh, I've heard the, my other co-guests 
saying that uh, poverty is a universal situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the way people are, uh, governments in different countries are tackling is, is different. I've been to India. India, there's a state in, in India, Uttar Pradesh. The total population of Uttar Pradesh, as at the last check, mm -hmm. was uh, 200 million. Mm -hmm. That means that state is bigger than Nigeria in terms mm -hmm. of human population. Yes. Um, things work in India, though you still see poverty in bold print, but you see people getting things to do. Mm -hmm. The main means of transportation is what we call keke here. Yes. Keke actually Indian made. Yes. You won't see government mm -hmm. coming out overnight to ban them. Yes. Then they have shops, the electricity is functional. Mm -hmm. They sell fruit because they grow fruit all year round. That means they, they've taken care of the angle of uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm fruits all year round. You see people selling this fruit, pulling, the, pushing their truck about. That is a way of checking poverty and bridging gap. Definitely the rich will need these services mm -hmm. being provided by the have-nots. Mm -hmm. And education is another angle. Mm -hmm. If education is tackled, if people are educated, functional education, not just having a useless degree, Mm -hmm. Our educational <laughs> system should be structured in such a way as so not to... I did, so I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm laughing because you said a useless degree. Yes. What is your definition of a useless degree? Well, <laughs> when uh, Nigeria is in need of people that we do something in respect of technology, agriculture, uh, uh, educational sector, then you, somebody is coming up with... Uh, we have many people with degree in uh, Yoruba language. Mm. <laughs> yes, that is, I'm not saying Yoruba language or Hausa Ibo languages are not okay, but when we need, when, when you have excess of them. Okay, so you mean functional education? Functional education. education. So yeah. if that issue is tackled and our education system is structured in such a way as to produce the needed caliber of graduates, mm -hmm. we'll be able to bridge this gap. At least somebody that that uh, that's a graduate who he or she will start work somehow it will get promoted mm -hmm. just by doing that it will be leaving the poverty right. the lower the rung of the ladder and, and will be climbing up gradually mm -hmm. but if, as long as we have a, a maybe yoruba graduate teaching uh, one room nursery primary school mm -hmm. the poverty continues Okay. I was going to ask you, Mr. Lady, because you were talking, we were talking about a risk in, in and which is why the percentage uh, for loans is very high. Now, if we're making, a, uh, we're allowing or creating a situation where uh, the less, the lower class, the poor, can buy houses, is the house they're buying not collateral? Because what would happen at the end of the day is that if they do not, if they default on payment, then the house is taken back by the bank. So in that case, wouldn't we say there's little or no risk in giving such a person a loan? No, the issue, you said the issue of a mortgage uh, in that aspect, mm. of course, the house serves as a collateral. Mm -hmm. So uh, the problem is not the collateral. The problem is the ability or capacity of the person to meet up the mortgage interest on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And of, but of course, the banks are usually uh, better structured to that because if you default, they will repossess the. Exactly. So, so the issue is the, the, the double digit interest rate is not, uh, in terms of mortgage, is not a function. What I'm talking about that is basically like if you want a facility mm -hmm. to finance your business, not mortgage, mm -hmm. because but your mortgage there is a tangible asset. So mm -hmm. there's a yeah. different percentage if you're buying a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least for house, the the asset, the the house constitutes the collateral. So there's a tangible asset. So there is no risk in terms of that. The only risk aspect is your ability to service the interest on a regular basis. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I think one of the things that causes that is th this percent, this what you call it, the ten percent, twenty percent that you have to put down before you can actually buy a house yeah, because you need to have some kind of consideration, isn't it, okay. be before you go into a contract with that. And I think that's actually what deters people from being able to actually go and get the mortgage rather than, you know, the, the, the fear of actually being able to repay. They because say, if you're going to buy a property for? and, um, actually, sorry, if you're going to buy a property and you can't afford to the bring the 10 percent, if it's if it's a hundred million property, for Sometimes example, 20 percent, 20 percent, so there's no encouragement, really, at the end of the day. No, what, what mm -hmm. I was thinking, mm -hmm. 
was that for those below the uh, poverty line uh, Nigerians, mm -hmm. that the, it should not be left for them. It should be a given that, look, if you are in, in an employment, say in the ministry, mm -hmm. you know when they got into the employment. They have a record. Mm -hmm. You know when they are due, due for retirement. For such people, there should be a plan put in place while they are still active. The plan will be that this housing that we are talking about is meant for this category of people. Mm -hmm. You are in employment. My, your paycheck comes from government. Yes. So that is built into the salary that they end, that at the end of the month, just that, like you deduct tax, mm -hmm. that this X, Y, Z amount will be deducted, both for interest and everything. This is how much will, will be taken off your salary every month. The people know. So anybody that wants, that is com comfortable with that kind of idea, and you are desirous of owning your own home, mm -hmm. you have the, the, the privilege of taking advantage of such, you mm -hmm. know, of such an arrangement. That mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. It is not left for them. So they have no... Uh, it is, they, they have no negotiating power other than the power of employment, which is used on their behalf for negotiation. I think that's, that's what I mean. From, yeah. I think I uh, in such a situation, if you are in government employment, like we have this contributory pension scheme, mortgage should, to, should be introduced that we have, uh, a, the employer will pay certain percentage to be the duty or responsibility of the mm -hmm. employer, employer. Mm -hmm. to pay certain percentage, then the employee will also add. That will be one of the incentives that will encourage the man to put mm. his best, put in his best in the employment. I think if we are not thinking this way. Governments this day just think what we can get. <laughs> because uh, yeah, somebody see. was okay. joking the other time that uh, uh, when you talk of BRF, you, the R there means revenue, that the only wants to hear is revenue. <laughs> so we, the, the thing is that when government start to think about revenue, 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 they miss out in the welfare aspect oh, hold of on governance. Sir. We're says, going to okay. take a short break now and we'll be right back. <laughs> on MT and Color Tunes for Dr. Sid's Surulere featuring Don Jazzy. Text 57 to 4100 to subscribe at 50 Naira only. Terms and conditions apply. MTN, everywhere you go. Welcome back to Amazons. We've been talking about how we can prefer solutions to bridge the gap, the golfing gap, or there's a gulf you said, between the rich and the poor. Yes, uh, my, my question is um, to Barista Ajit, Ajit Mobi. When government increased the pump price of petrol, and there was this big riot, there was a promise that the proceeds will make life easier for Nigerians, mm -hmm. that the Shopee will provide employment, mm -hmm. that the Shopee will provide road, that the Shopee will give us electricity. When government makes a promise, government should be held to that promise, held accountable. Now, they ha I don't think government has delivered on that promise because from these statistics, as a lawyer, and your body, the Nigerian Bar Association, you, don't you think you have a corporate or uh, 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 social, social re responsibility to, to the citizen to make sure or enforce or draw government's, government's attention to the fact that when government makes a promise, it becomes government's promise becomes, you know, it, it is it. When, when the president says this is what we would do, it, it has to be done. It's going to be two years in a matter of months. I don't know about P. The light is still not constant. The roads are still not motorable. The healthcare <laughs> is still not there. The education is still in shambles. So what exactly is Shaw P and where is the process of Shaw P from 2000 and when was it till now? Well, <laughs> if you ask me about the process, where the process of Shaw P is, I was reading the newspaper recently that some a particular party uh, members were having problem in sharing or distributing equitably among the party members the proceeds of Shaw P. The party member? A particular party, I don't want a to mention a particular party. Political party, their members are exchanging blues 
because they felt that they were not <laughs> stakeholders. They were not settled <laughs> adequately from the proceed of shopping <laughs> meant for a particular state. So that will show you where this proceed of the shopping, of the shopping <laughs> has gone into. But when you talk about hmm. integrity in governance in Nigeria, Nigeria is one of the few countries where government will come out and lie bold face to the people. They will mm. tell the people that we are going this way, meanwhile, they are going the other way. So, and over the years, we've gotten used to it. They, they, we don't really believe in government. I was reading a paper, a newspaper cutting on the internet. It was, was it 1984? The government promised that by 1986, there will be a blackout. Where are we now? How many years after? How many years after? So when they promised that by so the, now they promised before now they said that by 2013 there'll be 20 megawatts. Now they've told us that it's not possible this year again. By 2014 there will be at least 10,000 megawatts, and as at now there is down below 2,000. So nobody is even taking government seriously in Nigeria again. So that is where our problem is. If government says something, nobody reckons with it. But, but what are you doing as a we're body? still stuck where we are? Exactly. Isn't that why the gap is wagging? And don't it's we wagging. as people within this country, don't we have bodies? She asked the bar association, what are they doing to make sure that so our rights as a people it's is protected? We have problem at the bar. I won't, I won't lie to you. I... I've been chairman of Ikeja Bar for two years. I've been member of National Executive Committee. I know presently we are having problems. I read, uh, I watched uh, Oshio Mole castigating, rightly so, the president of the NBA for dabbling into Nigerian uh, Governors Forum issue. It's not really, that is not our problem. How is government treating the people? Because the bar ought to be the uh, the, the protector. mouthpiece yeah, mouth of the masses. Yes, of yes. But uh, what we are seeing now is a different thing entirely. You see them, because I remember during the f subsidy issue, we were under the leadership of Mr. Molly then. We were always at uh, Ojota. Some people are saying, what's the problem of NBA? Uh, NBA is a professional organization. We shouldn't be involved. We told them that our duty is to the masses. Of course. Because if we fail, we may be the next target of armed robber because if you are having two cars and there are so many poverty stricken people in your environment, you'll be the target. That yeah. is just what we're trying to do. But I believe the present leadership of the bar has, uh, is more or less politicized. So they can't really think in a straight way. Unlike in the days of like, uh, Gani, Gani, Gani Fawen. No, me. Gani Fawen me is a law unto himself. He's <laughs> he was ready to lose everything mm. in the interest so of the don't, masses. So don't, don't we have such people anymore in the body of the Nigerian bar I tell you I'm involved deeply in the bar. If anybody comes out to say, yes, I'll die for the masses, let them give him a contract or let, them put, let, the, let the government put him in a petrol-related uh, body to serve, <laughs> that will be the end of their letter. I know mm. what I'm talking about. Some people will criticize government on the pages of newspaper. Next time you see them addressing a, a, a seminar in Azorok, we, we, we Ghani really, will never it, do that. Really, Aka, Alawa Kabashonu will never do that. That is why Ikejaba celebrate these two personalities. The other people you have, they are Ajib. Any gov they are for any government in power. And they <laughs> carry the banner of the bar. That, uh, we are lawyers, we, are, we represent the masses, they sell the masses. So that is the problem we have for now. If you see some individual, well, they may have good intention, but the road to hell is paved with best of intention too. Of course it is. So, 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 um, based on everything that you have said, um, Bimbo, I don't know if you have got anything else to add. No, I'm just, I'm at a <laughs> loss because it looks like, honestly, we want to proffer solutions. What sort of solutions are we going to proffer if everything is the way we're saying? Those that are supposed to be our champions, make sure that we get what we want. Once mm. they get one contract, it's over and done. They're mm. there for their own self-satisfaction. Mm. The government is not relating well with the people. They are not answering our needs. Mm -hmm. And we are on, we're supposedly, you know, doing democracy. Well, Meanwhile, we're, we're our dying. Our destiny is in our hands. We do, that means don't leave people to fight for you. Fight, fight for, for yourself. yourself. If you uh, vote, make sure you protect your vote mm -hmm. and vote wisely. That is 
the long and short but of it. But then if we say that we're also talking about education, which is a huge problem. They go to areas and give people money and say, vote for me, don't worry, it will be better. Those people are so short-sighted, unfortunately, because they're looking at their immediate problems. They will collect this money. Education, if we have educated all these people and they are educated, they had sound education, they will understand that they're selling away their rights. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much for coming to join us here, and um, I'm sure we've learned a lot from your contribution. Thank you very much, sir. Hi, Sean Well, it's, it's been said. Everything has been said. I'm in, I'm sad because you know what? Before, sometimes when you don't think about all the things that are going on, you think there's hope. It looks like it's a hopeless situation mm -hmm. because even the foreign investments that the foreign investors are coming in are reaping us off because there's no regulatory body mm -hmm. to make sure that they are doing what they should. They, they we have what they call corporate uh, responsibilities. Who, are they doing that here? No, no, thank, no, you. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, viewers at home for <laughs> watching. Um, we've been talking about bridging the gap between the poor and the rich, and we have preferred quite a lot of um, solutions here. But one thing I know is we cannot teach our government anything, but we can only make them think by voicing our feelings and hope that one day there would be one planet, one family, one future, and one class. Thank you for watching.